Hi. Now, if you're playing an electric guitar, uh, chances are you're going to be going through some sort of amplifier. You know, either it's going to be a combo unit where you've got the amplifier and the speaker built in, or something separate where you've got the amplifier head feeding into a separate speaker cabinet. Either way, the basic principle is the same. Signal goes from the guitar down the cable into the amplifier. The amplifier gives you the basic sound, makes it loud, and then that sounds transferred to the speakers and the speakers move the air and that's what you can hear. And you can get some great sounds, especially when you can really turn the volume up. You know, if you're into your rock guitar and you want a distorted sound, nothing really sounds like a, a guitar amp, especially a valve amp, when, it's, when the volume gain's turned up and you're really shifting some air. The problem is, it can get kind of loud and that can be a problem, you know, if you're uh, you know, recording late at night or you know, you want to play your guitar and there's other people in the house and they don't want to be disturbed. So I thought, thought I'd talk a little bit today about um, how you can kind of capture the sound in other ways and getting the best out of that. First off, I think it's important when you're practicing, you know, if you've got an electric guitar, you can just sit and play, you know, just acoustically. It sounds okay, um, you know, you can hear what you're doing, but I think it's best if you can actually play with like your, you know, your personal sound, you know, whether that's a clean sound through the amp or overdriven or with effects or whatever, um, because the way that the the guitar sounds when you play it, it will affect the way you play. There's going to be certain little dynamics um, for how the how the guitar sounds. Um, that will affect kind of how you react to it and, and it affects it the way you play. So I always say if you can play, you know, plugged in, sounding you know, the way you, you, know, you would normally sound, then that's a good thing to do. Problem is though, like I say, sometimes that's just going to be a bit too loud. So one thing people can often do is just stick a set of headphones into the, uh, into the amp. A lot of amplifiers have a headphone socket on them. Problem is, headphones su support the full range of, of sounds from bass right the way through to treble. You know, so you can plug them into your, you know, your MP3 player or, or stereo or whatever, and you can hear, you know, any instrument that's you know being played on the track. Guitar, however, doesn't produce a full range of frequencies. You know, the way you get a, the sound coming out of a guitar speaker, those speakers um, for a guitar amplifier are kind of tuned, if you like, to only produce certain frequencies. And you'll notice if you just plug um, your headphones into a guitar amplifier, you might sound sounds really, really thin and kind of fizzy, particularly if you've got an overdriven sound. And that's because the, the little speakers and the headphones are capable of reproducing frequencies that the guitar amplifier uh, speakers don't. What some manufacturers are starting to do now is actually include what's called a speaker emulator in the amplifier. Um, my, my main amp is a, it's a Blackstar HT5R. Fantastic amp and that's got an emulated output on it. And what that does is when I plug the amplifier directly into a mixing desk or, or whatever, it only sends out the sort of frequencies that the speaker would generally uh, reproduce. I'll show you that now. What I've got over here is a, it's a little, um, I'm direct into a little effects unit, then into the mixer. What I'll do is I'll, I'll just play you. This is the sound that I normally get. I'm using a Korg Pandora. Uh, it's quite an old one, I think it's a PX4. Um, and this is the sound that I've got set up just through the through the cork uh, cork Pandora here. Now, one of the effects in the chain here is a speaker emulator, and what that's doing the the Pandora is quite nice, as you can pick the kind of speakers that you want to emulate. If you want to get the sort of frequencies you get from, like a four by twelve vintage cabinet or a four by ten tweed cabinet, whatever. Now I've got that set up there, emulating the sound as if you get it from four by twelve cabinet. What I'm going to do now, though, is I'm going to turn off the speaker emulator in the effects chain, so you can hear the difference.
So you can hear the difference there. Without the speaker emulation, it's so much more fizzy. It just it just doesn't sound as good. And that's what the, the, the magic of the speaker emulator is that it, it cuts out a lot of the top end frequencies that a guitar speaker um, isn't capable of, of reproducing. So you can have a guitar into an amp or something and then take out all of the top end and put it directly into, say, a, a recording desk. Um, you know, if you go direct to a PA console, um, you, know, re uh, you know, recording equipment, whatever. The sound that you get is much more like what you would hear um, through a guitar amplifier. You know, so if you want to record, yes, you can put a, a microphone in front of the guitar amp speakers and get the ambient sound, but that's going to mean working at really high volume sometimes. And you might find what you want to do is just record direct into a desk. You can do that if you put a speaker emulator in the chain because it gives you much more realistic guitar amp sort of sound. Another good reason for um, you know, playing, say, through headphones or just being able to do things at a, at a lower volume, you know, it's not to, sometimes it's not to disturb people who are in the, other people in the house or your neighbours or whatever. But if you're just learning, you can be really, really self-conscious if you know if you're making mistakes. And I've noticed this um, particularly if I'm say I'm teaching a, say like somebody a little bit younger who's got an older brother or sister. Um, you know, brothers and sisters are always fighting and you know trying to get on each other's nerves. So if you've got the you know the younger siblings you know trying to play, play something on the guitar with them, you know making a mistake, you know the elder brother will be going, oh, I'm hearing you making mistakes, you're rubbish, and it just dents the confidence. Whereas if you can just play something privately to yourself through headphones, but it still sounds good and that's going to encourage you, you know, you you're not going to be as intimidated and it'll just the whole learning experience is a lot more natural. So really what I'm getting at here is when, you, when you're playing, when you're practicing, it's good to do it with your own sound. And if volume's going to be an issue, or you know, privacy or whatever, your yeah, headphones or speakers turned way down low is a good way to go. You know, or similarly for recording, you know, if you want to go direct into a recording console or something. But make sure that if you're going what's called DI, direct injection, where you're not using a speaker, um, that you've got some sort of speaker emulation in the chain just to keep the, the, the whole thing sounding good. Otherwise it does sound like really fizzy and thin like that, uh, that second example I, I played for you. Now one other option that you've got for sort of managing the volume that comes out of your, your, your equipment is a thing called power soak. And power soaks really come into the room where you've got these really big high volume valve amplifiers, some of, the, some of the old marshals and that, where they come into the room and they really sound good when the the power stage is turned right up and it's just overdriving really nicely. But that brings with it a heck of a lot of volume. And what a power soak allows you to do is to have the amp turned way up and the sound that's coming out is like a full fully cranked amplifier. But then the power soak takes a lot of that power and just soaks it up, so what comes out of the speakers is a much more manageable, uh, much more manageable volume. So yeah, one of the great joys in life is the you know the sound of a really loud, overdriven power chord on the guitar. But sometimes you don't want a whole lot of volume coming out of the speakers. Sometimes you want a bit of privacy just through headphones, or you know you want to record directly into a, into a mixing desk or a console or something, and you can't do that but make sure that you've got something in there that gives you the sound as if it were coming out of a, a guitar amp, speaker emulator, something like that, just to take all of that top end off. Okay, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in another video sometime soon. Bye for now.